14 WILI and 95.3 FM presents Hometown Threads, a closer look at our community and the people that make it go. Every week, you'll hear uplifting stories from our local businesses and our neighbors. Now, here's our host for Hometown Threads, Keith C. Rice. Welcome to episode 28 of Hometown Threads on 14 WILI 95.3 FM and Willimantic Today Facebook. It's Kate C. Rice, and of course, uh, Hometown Threads comes your way courtesy of our good friends at Liberty Bank. Be community kind. Just making sure I had the right mug. Uh, with three great local locations, West Main Street, Willimantic, Gateway Commons. Say hello to my wife, Marianne Gargoni. Uh, right across the street here, 679 Main Street in Willimantic, Angela Smart, the manager over there. And then Route 195 in Mansfield, Liberty Bank, be community kind. J. Matt Rupar, if you wouldn't mind, say hello to the fine folks. Hello. A big thanks to everyone who uh, makes this show possible, according J. Ma- uh, of course, J. Matt Rupar as well, and the folks at Willimantic Today Facebook. Uh, Hometown Threads airs every Tuesday, 5.05 to 5.30, right here on WILI. And then uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday nights, we usually uh, pin it atop the page of Willimantic Today Facebook, so you can watch it, you can listen to it. We... Uh, We've been doing it since mid-November. We bring in longtime business owners. We bring in community members and neighbors who've got great stories to share. And for episode 28, it's a pleasure to bring in Kathleen Kreider, who I get to see on a monthly basis because she comes in to record her uh, commercial for Community Partners Group. We'll get into that as well. I thought Tom White had a long title last week. Let's see if I can get this right here. Uh, Kathleen Kreider is part of the, um, you work at Access Community Action Agency, Senior Director of Community Engagement and Resource Management. Nice job. All we right. Did it. <laughs> well, before we get into the, uh, you know, Kathleen growing up in these parts, how we usually start the show, your hometown threads, where does Community Partners Group fit in with what you do with Access Community Action Agency? Right. So the Community Partners Group. See, I sound like I'm on the radio. The Community Partners Group. I know. I feel like I'm hearing uh, the commercial. <laughs> is a uh, group of nonprofit agencies in this community, WAME, uh, Perception Programs, CHR, Access Community Action Agency, uh, Perce- did I say Perception Generations? We can run the commercial if you right. Yeah, and <clears throat> and WILI. And together we do a monthly public service announcement so that people in community know what's going on with the various uh, nonprofit agencies. So it's just a, a public service announcement about where people can get services and what's happening. So like this month we just recorded about WAME, the Wyndham mm-hmm. Area Interfaith Ministry, and all the terrific services that they have. And we just do this on a monthly basis. And we are funded, this is important, by the Jeffrey Piasson Family Foundation and WILI. Very important. See, that, that's usually at the end of the spot. And i, I got to say, and I'm not just saying this because I see Kathleen on a monthly basis, and not just because you're the guest of episode 28 here of Hometown Threads, but you've, I've told you this before, I love your delivery. She speaks clearly and effectively, and we definitely agree on this. And you got, you're in my head, when I, I think it was a couple months ago, you said, I can't stand when people say, and I, I agree with you, Willimantic. Oh, Willimantic. It's, I, know, I know what happens. I'm guilty. I said it. It slips out. It's Willimantic. It's, there is a T. And that's why I caught myself at the beginning of the show when I said Willimantic today. That's right. Because I've watched previous shows. Like, oh, I thought of Kathleen. She's going to kill me if she ever sees it. It's not Willimantic. <laughs> it's spelled with a T at the end. That's Willimantic. Right. That's right. And it's that's, romantic. Willimantic. That's right. We're just getting started here with Kathleen Kreider, and what we usually do at the top of every show is tell us about growing up in the area. Did you grow, uh, you grew up in Coventry, or was it Willimantic? Willimantic. Right, so to be clear, I am from Wisconsin. Ooh, see, I, didn't, I see her every month, but I didn't know right. this. All right. uh, but in 1971, uh, my family moved from Madison, Wisconsin to Willimantic. My dad took a position, his, his postdoctoral position at UConn, and we moved to the other side of the river. Uh, 343 Pleasant Street is where I grew up. So this is, uh, I am a total townie. This is, I got the t-shirt. This is, I shop and loiter in Willimantic. This is the community that I am most associated with. This is where my heart is. What Uh, year again did you? In 1971. 1971. Right. So I bought my shoes at um, Prague's. What what was it? It Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, the, the shoe store there, I mean, like, all... Like Ben's this, Eagle? Yeah, Ben's <laughs> Eagle, right? I went to Bev's. I mean, like, this was this was where I hung out. And I lived on the other side of the river, so I walked over the footbridge all the time. I got donuts at Mario's Bakery. Okay, we believe I was, you. I was at the <laughs> Y, you know, that was a great place. And then in the early 80s, in 1979, which is actually the late 70s, 
my mother remarried Skip Walsh, Robert Skip Walsh, who was a state representative at the time, and we moved to Coventry. Your mom married Skip Walsh. He, she did. And we know that name. So, um, well, I, before we get to the Skip Walsh story, that's a big, big story. It's a big, big story. Where did you tell us about your education uh, growing up here yeah. in the area? So, uh, I'm one of those really fortunate people. I got to go to Kramer. I got to go, I got to, go to Noble School. I oh, walked. I went to Noble. Okay. I went to Noble. And then I got to, so I, I say with, you know, with, with my educational development, I just walked further and further from home. So I started at Noble School. I then went to Kramer. I was one of the last, I was in the last sixth grade class at Kramer. Uh -huh. And then I started my freshman year. I finished my freshman year at Wyndham High. And at the end of my freshman year, we moved to Coventry. So I graduated from Coventry High School in 1982. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And ultimately wound up at UConn, but there's a little gap. I took some time off to just do stuff. That little gap, you're just trying to figure out where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do, all that stuff. A lot Pretty of people much, do that. Yeah. We all do that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was it? Would you like enjoy Coventry High School? Coventry's a nice little town. Coventry's a great little town. I'm super psyched that I live there now, which is ultimately long, long story that I won't bore you with. That is where I wound up. I bought my mother's house and I raised my kids in Coventry. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it it, it wasn't a I mean, I, I love living in Willimantic, right? I mean, I, I love living in Willimantic. So the move to Coventry was necessary. It wasn't something I had a choice about. I have great friends from Coventry. Today, I can hang out with the men and women that I graduated with, and that feels really important to me. I also have really good friends from my time in Willimantic, too. So well, this I should is, bring them all over to Rocks and Wings absolutely. and Goodwill Tavern and get them all together, that, Willimantic and Coventry. This has, been a, this has been a really rich life. And then I also spent four years living in the Mountain West and on the West Coast. Really? Yeah, and so that's also a really rich and important time. What, so. uh, what were those years, like from when to when? Yeah, so I uh, started at UConn in 1986 or 5 or something like that. This is ancient history. and But those in-between years, I lived in Boulder, Colorado. I lived in Santa Cruz, California. Really? Yeah, and I just... Beautiful part of the country. Yeah, you uh, know, I just did outdoor things. I rock climbed, and I went, and I ran, and I met people, and I played Ultimate Frisbee, and I listened to great music. Really? And I, yeah, I had, it was a... It was a it was a terrific time. What kind of, what's your kind of music? I never asked you. What's, oh. your, what's your genre? Yeah. You know, it's all over the place, actually. <laughs> very um, eclectic? It's very eclectic. I was just at the Green River Festival up in uh, Greenfield, Mass., which is a sort of a Americana indie folk rock kind of thing. And then in August, I'm going to see Pink. Get out of yeah. here. I have so a picture sorry. of me. I met Pink. Did you? Yeah, I'll show nice. you a picture. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's cool. Yeah, good for you. I'd love to meet Pink. So that's great. You have a wide range of friends. Oh, yeah, it's all over the map. <laughs> wow. So uh, we're talking with Kathleen Cryer, episode 28 of Hometown Threads on 14 WILI, 95.3 FM, and Willimantic Today, Facebook. <laughs> Watch next week, uh, the next episode of Willimantic. <laughs> so, all right, now, uh, what, what, you decide, what brought you back east? College. Oh, okay. It just I just realized after having all kinds of fun, 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 actually it was because of some of the fun that I was having that I sort of figured out what I wanted to do. And I, had, I was spending a lot of time in the sort of alternative sport world, uh, bicycle racers, uh, rock climbers, marathon runners. Boulder, Colorado is a real hotbed for uh, elite level athletes of a variety of different kinds. So I, you know, was spending time with people on Wheaties boxes. Not that I understood that at the time, but I was sort of getting this this inkling that, that this was kind of a cool world to hang out in. I am not an athlete, I'm, I'm a participant, but I'm certainly not competitive. And so I thought, well, how, how could I spend the rest of my life hanging out with athletes? And I also still to this day have this sort of fascination with human potential, especially physical potential. And so I came back to the University of Connecticut and got my degree in sports medicine and spent 20 years as an athletic trainer. So delivering medical care to athletes. Again, another thing I don't think I knew about Kathleen Cryer. Well, no. it's in, it's it, you could think of it as a pretty good sized bridge in regards to sports medicine, and now I work for a nonprofit, right? So like, how you does know that where I'm going with that? Because yeah, sure. so okay, you did sports medicine, and it sounds like you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. What what did, what happened? One morning you woke up and said, hey, "I'm done with this." Well, if you think about sports, and I know you do, um, so they they typically happen in the afternoons or the evenings or on the weekends and there's often travel involved. I'm sensing schedule conflicts here. It's really hard to be a parent with that kind of lifestyle. 
And um, after a really long time, I, it just shifted for me that, you know, after taking care of all of these other people's kids, and I ended my career at Wyndham High. So I, I, I had five outstanding years as the athletic trainer at Wyndham High School, working with Bob Haddad, working with rest, Becky Howard. Rest in peace, Bob Oh, Howard, absolutely. Bob I mean, just, you know, Brian Crudden, just yeah, an well. incredible staff of people. Sebi Randazzo was there. Sebi, was a guest. Yes, was Gary, uh, Gary Dobbs. There was just, it was a terrific, terrific place to be, and a terrific parent group, uh, and terrific kids. And, and one day... A, a, a parent, a father, said to me as I'm walking off the field, I got all my stuff, and he said, every time I see you down there, I feel so much better. And it just hit me really hard that this was a pretty intense responsibility, and I have my own kids at home, and I'm not paying good enough attention to them. Wow. I mean, it's 7 o'clock at night, it's 10 o'clock at night, it's Saturday morning, it's Sunday afternoon, the Chronicle Classic all during the Christmas break, you know, it's like... I'm just not home, and I needed to go home. So it was that particular parent that kind of gave you a little wake-up call or, or a calling. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so in, what year did you leave Wyndham again? Or Oh, boy, oh, boy, boy. Let's see. Asa was born in 1998, so probably 2000. I had no idea you were, you worked with all those people, a lot of those people I know as well. And um, But so, okay, 1998. Yeah. One, of, one of my son Asa's first, like, babysitters, if you will, was Nick... Nassif, Sue Nassif's wow, son. Jeez. Yeah, he was a student at Wyndham High. And for him, it was like babies and puppies and nothing. Like, he was like, can I have another one of these? He'd take Asa out, you know, in his little stroller, his little carrier, and, and all of the Wyndham High girls. Oh, Nick, look at this baby. And Nick's like, I've never had this much attention in my life. You know? Kathleen, oh, get wow. me another one. You know? so, wow. so, yeah, so I, I think it was, I think Asa was probably about two. Two or three when I left, so somewhere in the 2000, 2001, something like that. So, is that what led you to the nonprofit world, or you left athletics and like, okay, I gotta, I gotta think of something else? Like, what had it all? What was the transition? Yeah. It, it, so first, I went home and spent some time at home, and then the, and then. Right, so I went home to take care of my kids, and then I realized, yeah, I'm not very good at taking care of my kids. Right, that's I need the to priority. Go, do something go, go take else. care of the right. kids, right? You know, I wasn't the most graceful mother to young children, so I thought, okay, we can figure this out. And and by that point, Asa was ready to enter into um, first or kindergarten, I guess, or preschool. And I got a job at Mount Hope Montessori School. Uh huh. Okay. Over in Mansfield, in Mansfield, right near Mansfield Hollow, right down in there on Bassett's Bridge Road. Is that Oak Grove now, or no? Oak Grove is a whole well, other school. One. Okay. Yeah, there we are very fortunate. This community is super fortunate. Two banging Montessori schools, really great. There's yeah. actually great early care and education here in this area. So, um, so I got a job at Mount Hope, and eventually, pretty quickly, became the director. And I spent ten, so my kids' really young years, ten years, working as the director of that school. This is perfect. Perfect, <clears throat> perfect, perfect for me. Young kids, single mom, perfect. Great supportive environment really lovely and then from there I got a job in the town of Mansfield as their early childhood services coordinator I then moved to very briefly to East Con. Well, so you jumped around a little there. Well, it, 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 the jumping around became a little bit more intentional like I was gathering this sort of non-profit early education sort of skill sets I'm sort of a generalist that's for sure and then eventually took a job at Access under a grant, a planning grant, so it wasn't supposed to have lasted as long as it has, um, but got very fortunate early on in that process to be tapped into a senior director's position, and I've now been at Access for about six years. Wow. I keep thinking you've been there longer. So um, I do want to get back to the story about your mother and Skip mm -hmm. Walsh and all that. Uh, we're talking with Kathleen Kreider here on 14WILI 95.3 FM with Atlantic Today Facebook. Uh, brought to you by Liberty Bank, Be Community Kind. Tell us a little about uh, your starting off at uh, Access, and then we'll uh, you know we'll get into your mom and all that stuff. Yeah, so I, I came to Access under a planning grant. We um, were the United Way of uh, Central and Northeastern Connecticut had come to Access uh, with, a pl with some planning dollars to put together a program that was specifically designed to help under or uh, unemployed individuals find their way meaning in a meaningful way back into the into the work environment. So we had to design a program to do this, and we spent a bunch of time in community talking with employers, talking with funders, talking with nonprofit leaders about what a good employee looks like and what are the skill sets that employers wanted 
these people to have. When you're hiring staff, what do you want them to know? And I remember Bill Potvin oh, yeah. saying to me, from Hosmer Mountain Soda, saying to me, I don't need you to train them for what I do for a living. I do that. What I need you to do is get them to come to work, to value what I value, to think that my job is a good job. Another hometown friends guest, Bill Potvin. Absolutely, absolutely. And I said to Bill, and he said, and I don't think you can do that. Because I don't he think did? he did. He said, I don't think you can train people to have values. And I said, but I think I can connect people back to their values if they've lost them. And if you've been under or unemployed for potentially some pretty, pretty good sized reasons for a long period of time, you may be disconnected from your value system. So we designed Access to Employment, which is the shortest version of the long story, and um, for many, many years uh, put people through an 11 week twice, uh, four hours, two nights a week program that gave them fi some financial training, some computer training, you know, basic skills, getting back into the workforce, how do you send a proper email, what should your outgoing voicemail message sound like if you're waiting for a potential employer to call you, wow, all that basic stuff? things like this, also some budgeting, but not budgeting like um, how do you balance your checkbook, I haven't balanced my checkbook in years. Um, <laughs> What's a checkbook? Mm, What's a checkbook? <laughs> but rather, what does it mean to live paycheck to paycheck? How do you move beyond that? Why is your credit score important? When you go to work every single day over a long period of time, how does that improve your life, the life of your family? What do you give to your community and yourself yeah, when you're you not, like that? You yourself, you're not teaching this. You have yeah, people. No, oh, yeah, yeah. You are. Myself I and the staff. I thought you employed those people. Though. Okay. No, we train these people. And then we also spend a lot of time on interpersonal, like the value, like the Bill Potvin thing. How do I get people to connect to the value of meaningful work? and what it means to go to work. Did you ever day. employ and actually get somebody to work at Hosmer Mountain? <laughs> so here no, you go, we Bill. Never, never got any, but not that I know of, but right. we did um, a, another part of the program was to help people into jobs. And okay. Access also does that. So we, you know, our case managers at our employment case managers at Access and the Access to Employment program worked in concert to help people find jobs. This is great. We're learning about Access for those of you who are not familiar with that either. And you're the uh, a senior director of the Community Engagement Resource Management, so it all kind of goes together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's get into the like, little personal side. Sure. You're about to say, uh, earlier in the episode here in the show, you're about to get into your mother is married to Skip Walsh. Right. Let's let's hear that story. And, of course, Skip Walsh, a lot of people know that name around here. Sure. I, I will take a little side step and say my mother was also married to Bruce Bellingham. That's right. Right. <laughs> yes. She's married to Bruce Bellingham, too, who's also a big name. Right. The big joke in our family is... Don't marry my mother. Doesn't work out well for you. <laughs> anyway. Um, How's she doing, by the way? My mother's doing, she was, yeah, thank you for asking. Okay. All kidding aside, she's doing great. Okay. Yeah, okay. she is. She's about to turn 80. Oh, God and, bless um, you. and she's doing great. Um, so, right. So, my mother was married to Robert Skip Walsh, uh, three-time state representative, representing, I think at the time it was the 53rd, maybe the 52nd, I don't remember, district. Certainly, Coventry was part of that. Up Route 6 and over Bolton in that direction. Uh, my mom and Skip were coming home from work in December one night, and Skip was killed by a uh, driver mm -hmm. on Route 6. Mm -hmm. My mother was injured in the accident, but she's fine today. So, you know, this was startling and tragic, and actually, this radio station plays a really big piece, holds a big piece in our story. Um, so certainly the immediate family knew what had happened. My mother was taken to Wyndham Hospital. Uh, this was on a, I believe a Monday night. So at that time, Wayne Norman was on air with Danny Chun. Danny Chun, okay. a long time news director. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, my mother's at Wyndham, Skip's dead. I'm at my mother's house and I'm listening to the radio. I'm sorry, how old are you at this point? I am... Not yet 30. 28. Okay. My brothers are about to turn 21. I'm 28 years old. And Danny Chun announces Skip's death on air. And about four seconds later, the phone rings at my mother's house. And at some point, I'm going to say an hour later, my memory's not that good, I, I, in between calls, call a friend and say, you, you have to come over and make coffee. I've been standing with the coffee pot in my hand for an hour. The phone has not stopped ringing. Oh, my God. So oh my God. when we think about this whole moment in time, it goes right back to WILI and Danny and, um, and the support from the community, Wyndham Hospital, keeping my mother in the ICU beyond required because the switchboard was lighting up and just, you know, a tremendous community outreach. I think that the part of the story that is most important for people to hear is, right, you know, Skip was... 
at the time, uh, there had been 21 deaths on Route 6 in 10 years. At so the time. At the time. Oh, my God. And uh, so from that, my mother, who is a community activist and a community member, uh, she turned her grief into action and uh, created an organization called Safe Six, which was sort of a round table of all of the important entities along that 11-mile stretch. And they gained uh, very national attention. My mother was in magazines and on television really? talking about all of this. And the outcome of that, the, the outcome of the tragedy, was that we now have left-hand turn lanes all along that 11-mile stretch, the big signage that says headlights on for safety at all wow. times. They had put in some, some policing pullout so that uh, if people needed to pull over for good and bad reasons, they could. Um, but all of those safety measures on Route 6, which had sort of languished after the I-84 East thing that never came through, really came together. Route 6 really came together and it became a much safer road. And I, I can't speak statistically, but if it was more than two deaths a year, why don't I mean, I think we're down to less than one in five years. Definitely. Right? And no death is okay. Um, but tremendous change to that 11 mile section. And we're talking about the Route 6 uh, West section, uh, you know, Willimantic to Bolton. Yeah. Uh, and so, so while it was tragic for our family and for the community, a lot of really good things came out of it. Yeah. That's definitely a good way to put it. Um, yeah. and, and Kathleen, I know you're a little bit older than me, but we were talking about this before how. I remember this as a kid. Again, I can't remember how old I was. But, um, the the uh, the expressway that uh, yeah. that I was going, East. yeah, mm -hmm. that we thought. And again, I wish I could remember how old I was when this was happening. You might have a, you might remember better than I can. I really thought at one point that was going to go through, and we were going to have mm -hmm. an actual expressway, mm -hmm. you know, instead of what we have now, which is a good thing. It's safer. Mm -hmm. But that expressway wouldn't have been a bad thing, right? I mean, I know wetlands uh, and everything. A lot of a lot of went, a lot more went into it, but yeah, a lot of competing interests along that that section. I think if you look at it purely from an economic development perspective, it's certainly it's sort of like the movie Cars. Yeah. Right when the when the 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 highway the the major way goes around the community, and what was the byway is no longer the access road. The community suffers. So because we don't have access into Willimantic except on Will this on Route Six, which is one lane in each direction with all this stuff going on, right? I mean, talk about all the ins and outs, all of the, the turns that people have to make, and school buses, and, yeah. and uh, there's post offices, and libraries on that road. It is not an expressway. And so Willimantic, as a destination, kind of gets overlooked because there's no easy way in and out of this town. It's not easy to Hartford, it's not yeah. easy to Providence, it's not easy to Boston. The expressway, we don't know, but it might have done something about that. Well, well said, well said. All right, we uh, actually have about a minute, minute or so left here of Hometown Threads, episode 28 with uh, Kathleen Kreider here on WILI and uh, Willimantic Today Facebook. Uh, any final words or people you'd like to thank during this journey that you've been through so far? Well, there's no question for the people who know me, then they know my mom. And, uh, you know, as a, as a community member, my mother was, worked at Wyndham Hospital in development. She was the executive director of perception programs. She's been on Wayne's show many, many times. She's a UConn women's basketball fan to mm -hmm. her core uh, and has certainly dedicated a lot of her uh, passion and her values back to this community. And that has made a big difference for me, too. We are different and we are similar. And I appreciate both our differences and our similarities. So. Beautiful. Well done. Glad to have you in here. Thank you. All Thank right. you for asking. Kathleen Kreider, our guest for episode 28 of Hometown Threads on 14 WILI and Willimantic Today Facebook. A uh, big thanks to Liberty Bank, B Community Kind, my man Jay Matt Rupar behind the board. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Kathleen. And in the words of the great Roddy McCumber, bye for now, folks. Bye for now. And that concludes another edition of Hometown Threads. Got a story for Keith? Reach out to him on Facebook by searching Keith C. Rice or email him at krice at hallradio.net. Don't forget to tune in next week on 14 WILI and 95.3 FM, as well as the Willimantic Today page on Facebook. 